zip files, the lovable scamp of file formats. Where would we be without you and your space-saving file compressing ways? Zip files are a file archiving format that not only can consolidate a bunch of files down into just one, but it'll also use crazy math to compress all that data and make it take less space on your drive or through the internet. Need to send a bunch of files all at once without the headache of uploading them one by one? Zip files will do it, and they also come with bonus features like CRC checking to make sure your files arrive in one piece, password protection to keep your secret secret, and even file splitting for those times when you need to chop up larger file sets. But this video isn't really about zip files. I mean, it kind of is, but our beef today is with the new .zip top-level domain. So right now, you're probably looking at the title of this video and you're about to pull out your clickbait pitchfork. But before you do that, let me explain. The fact that you can confuse zip files with the .zip top level domain is the very issue that we're talking about today. And it's actually not a stretch to imagine that the trouble you could get yourself into with a .zip domain run by a bad actor could quite literally ruin your life. So let's get into it and see what all the fuss is about. It's Christian Wheel. Let's roll. So let's start with the basics, domain names. They are an online address, a handy signpost that tells your device where to go in the big wide web. You type in a domain name like youtube.com, hit enter, and boom, you're off to the land of cats playing pianos or whatever you're into. It's like magic, but with more routers. Domain names are separated into a couple different parts, and there's a dot separating each part from its parent. So for example, you have www.youtube.com. The com at the end is called the top level domain or TLD for short. There are a lot of .coms out there owned by a lot of different people, but Google owns the second level domain YouTube, which is separated from its top level domain com by the dot. When you own a second level domain, you can then also create as many subdomains of that as you'd like. That's the www part or any other prefix that YouTube wants to use. Again, separated from the second level domain by a dot. We are here to talk about the top level domain itself. There are three kinds of TLDs, generic top level domains like .com, .net, .org. These are the original gangsters of top level domains. Then there are country code TLDs like .uk, .us, .eu, and others. And finally, there are the new kids in town sponsored top-level domains. These are specialized top-level domains, usually relating to a particular industry or community. Along those lines, new types of generic top-level domains have been added over the years, and now Google just dropped eight brand new ones right into our laps. First up, we've got .dad, because nothing says I'm a responsible adult like a dad domain name. What's next? Dot son? Dot sis? Dot third cousin twice removed? Then there's dot ESQ for all the fancy lawyers out there. Nothing screams, I'm gonna sue you, quite like a dot ESQ domain name. For all you professors and PhDs, you've got dot prof and dot PhD to show off your academic prowess. You know, if you've spent that long studying, you might as well flex on your website, right? We've also got .nexus, .foo, .zip, and .mov, and I'm not quite sure who .foo is for, but I know Dave Grohl has spent his whole life fighting it, so to each their own, I guess. The issue we have today is with the last two, .mov and .zip, with .zip being the more problematic of the two. You see, these TLDs coincide with very popular file types. Zip files we've already talked about a bit, and .mov is a video container often holding Apple QuickTime video files. So what's wrong with that? What exactly is the problem with a top-level domain that's the same as a file format? Well, hold on to your mouse pad because we're about to take a wild ride into the world of what were they thinking? Here's the thing. Our software, bless its heart, it loves turning text into clickable links. And this is true about most of the modern tools we use today, whether it's email clients or messengers or social media sites, even our phones. They see you type in a .com or .org, they know they're dealing with a website and they automatically hyperlink it accordingly. It's actually really convenient, if not sometimes annoying, if you're trying to type something to print. But 
when these new TLDs like .zip and .mov are introduced, eventually our software is going to be updated to recognize them as domain names too. Once these new TLDs are included in our software, text that was previously treated as just text now could be treated as a link. And this is where the problems start. Imagine mentioning a .zip file in a text message or an email, and just the mention makes it show up as a link. Now, I'm no supervillain, but if I was, this new zip TLD would be like the key to the city. Just imagine all I'd have to do is register a domain like totally not a virus .zip, and I'm in business. Then I just need to wait for some unsuspecting internet user to mention my domain in an email or a post and software will turn it into a clickable link. Anyone who clicks on that link expecting a zip file from the sender, well, they're actually clicking a site that I control. I can send them any file that I want and they'll be tricked into opening it. Yikes. Now, I know what you're thinking. Isn't this just like any other internet security threat? And you're onto something, it kind of is, but there are some important differences with this. In the good old days, a malicious link looked suspicious. It was like a dude in a dark alley offering to sell you a Rolex. But with .zip and .mov as TLDs, malicious links can look like they're coming from a trusted source. In fact, they actually are coming from a trusted source most of the time. It's like getting a Rolex from your best friend. But then it turns out to be a fake. And the consequences to that could be an absolute disaster. First, there's ransomware, the digital equivalent of a hostage situation. Your precious files get locked up through encryption and the only key is in the hands of a faceless crook demanding Bitcoin. But maybe you're thinking, oh, that's fine, I'll just pay the ransom. Well, hold on to your credit cards because next up we've got data exfiltration. That's like a burglar not only robbing your house, but then selling your stuff on the dark web. They've got your banking details, medical records, even those special pictures you took that one time that you definitely didn't send to someone you met on Craigslist. <clears throat> All that's up for sale along with thousands of others' files up to the highest bidder. And if that wasn't enough, there's also keystroke logging. Imagine having a creepy stalker writing down everything you do, every key you press, every password you type, all being watched. And all this data can be used to hold you for ransom or even blackmail you. It can be devastating to you personally and absolutely cripple an entire company if you're on a work computer when this all happens. But what can we do about it? Well, first of all, awareness is key. So congratulations. By watching this video, you've already taken the first step. Go you. So share it with everyone you know. In fact, you should force them to watch it by any means necessary. Don't take no for an answer. But we also need to put pressure on software developers to consider these issues in their URL recognition algorithms. Yes, we are looking at you developers. You have the power to help. Third, and there are a lot of people calling for this already, and they make a very good point, pressure Google to cancel the .zip and .mov TLDs and any domain names registered under them, along with pressuring ICANN, the body that approves new top-level domains, from ever allowing a TLD that overlaps with a common file type again. And finally, we as users need to be vigilant. If you see a .zip or a .mov link, think twice before you click. Remember, just because it looks like a Rolex doesn't mean it is one. Now, before we wrap up here, one quick note for the technically astute of you. It's worth mentioning that yes, .com is also technically an executable file type. .com files are legacy programs, mostly run by MS-DOS and versions of Windows before 2000. They were limited to 64 kilobytes in size, and they just don't run on modern operating systems. Certainly not on any OS you should be using on the web. And their absolute obsolescence is what mitigates the risk of the .com TLD being used as an attack vector in this same way. So anyway, that's the deal with the new .zip top level domain. Just be careful. The internet is a weird and wonderful place, but it's also full of surprises. Another thing you might find on the internet that you should always be careful with is short links, which can also carry malware that could ruin your life. Click over here to learn all about those.